Hello, hello, um, good evening, everyone. Uh, God bless you if you're just joining us. I'm sorry we're just slightly running late this evening, um, but just want to bless God and bless you for coming and joining us this evening. Father, we want to thank you and we appreciate you, Lord, for this awesome opportunity to be able to share your word again. And uh, bless everyone that is joining us on this broadcast of Revival Hour. Um, I just want to thank you, Father, for just this another great, great opportunity. And I just pray, Father, that you just give us wisdom, understanding. I pray for the spirit of revelation, that Lord will not speak of ourselves, but Lord will speak, O oh God, of you in Jesus' name. God bless you, um, Eric. Thank you for joining us. Um, I want to share something with you today that is going to so, so bless you. And um, it will be good if you could share this message with your friends. Um, because some of you may have heard some of what I'm going to share today. But I'm going to share some things that are going to be slightly different. You may not have heard this regarding the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So I'm just going to just um, trust God that uh, we're going to experience God tonight. Even as we share this. It's not just going to be theories. But God is going to speak to your heart. And uh, you're going to be so blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. So, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Many of us obviously have heard um, about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So, like um, Susan says, she got, um, yeah, she got the baptism in 19, 1975. God bless. Thank God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And uh, she's been prophesying and praying in tongues ever since. Hallelujah. Uh, so, this is going to be refreshing again to you, Susan. It's also going to be a blessing to those of us as believers who have not received or not yet received the baptism, what we call the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So I'm going to talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to read a classic scripture from Acts chapter 1, verse 8. So we're going to talk about it slightly differently. Glory be to God. God bless you, Franny. Um, thank you for joining us. Hallelujah. So Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says, But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth hallelujah the, the amplified Bible says but you shall receive power ability efficiency and might when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and the ends, the very bounds of the earth. Now that word, power, the Greek word that was used for power there in that scripture is um, dunamis. So which means the ability to walk miracles. Hallelujah. So what Jesus was saying to the disciples here before he left was that they shall receive the ability to work miracles after that the Holy Ghost has come upon them. That's very important. Now, Jesus was saying, this is the, the last thing he said regarding the Holy Spirit before he left. was very clear command that they shall receive the ability to work miracles or they shall receive the power of God, which is the ability to work miracles. They shall begin to see signs, wonders and miracles as the minister or as the witness about him or as about his resurrection in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the ends of the earth. Now, what most people, and I'm going to say this very slowly so, so you, you understand what I'm saying. What most people think is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they think is actually speaking in tongues. Now, I'm going to say it again, so if you miss what I just said, you catch it. Most people have equated the baptism of the Holy Spirit to speaking in tongues. Now, when you ask them, have you, have you received the Holy Spirit or have you been filled with the Holy Spirit? Or have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? As Paul asked in Acts 19. They'll say, yes, I've received the Holy Spirit. I speak in tongues. That's great. But what most people fail to realize that speaking in tongues is just one of the evidences of being filled with the Holy Spirit. I'll say that again. Speaking in tongues is just one of the evidences or the manifestations, rather, of being filled with the Holy Spirit. It's just one. 
you realize if you read your Bible carefully, in all the accounts where people were filled with the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts, that not every account where did they speak in tongues. Now, in some accounts, we heard that they spoke in tongues and prophesied. In some accounts, we just heard that they prophesied. In some, you know, so the Holy Spirit did not make a mistake when he didn't make every single account for them to be, for the sign, the sign or the evidence of speaking in tongues to be a sign of the infilling. Now, the infilling, the, 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 the the, how I put it, the, how do you, how you know you have been filled with the Holy Spirit? How was the evidence? Jesus said you shall receive power. Power is the ability to work miracles. So the evidence, according to Jesus here in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, is not speaking in tongues. I believe in speaking in tongues, so I'll get to that later on. But I want to lay a very solid foundation for us to realize that most Pentecostals have been taught that when they get filled with the Holy Spirit, they shall speak in tongues. And it's true, but not always true. <laughs> Hallelujah. The reason why it's not always true is because even the Bible itself, when we looked at the people who are filled with the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts, not every occasion, not on every occasion, where did they say or did they, was it evident that they spoke in tongues immediately? We know that most of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. We know that they prophesied and things like that. There were other signs that showed that they spoke in tongues. Hallelujah. Bless God. But one sign that is very consistent, that we see very clearly, is that Jesus said, you shall receive power, which means you shall receive the ability to work miracles, signs and wonders. Now, if as a believer you've been speaking in tongues since the day you got saved, and you are not walking in power, or you are not walking in miracles, signs and wonders, you need to ask yourself the question, have I received the fullness of the power of God? It's a simple question. I'll ask it again. Since receiving or since you got born again or since you got, you know, since you got filled with the Holy Spirit, for those who have been filled with the Holy Spirit. So since you received the, the, the ability or the, you received the power of the Holy Spirit upon you and you now speak in tongues... Are you, have you received or are you walking in the power of God according to Acts chapter 1 verse 8 that says, But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea and all the desert of the earth. It's a very simple question, but it's very, very powerful because like I said, most believers have equated being filled with the Holy Spirit with speaking in tongues. But it is more than speaking in tongues. There is more to the Holy Spirit than just speaking in tongues. Now, as a believer, being filled with the Holy Spirit, the Bible says very clearly that you shall receive power, which means you shall receive the ability to walk miracles, signs, and wonders. You shall begin to walk in the power of God. So let's look at when the, the first time believers were filled with the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2. From verse 1 says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting it says and there appeared unto them cloven tongues as a fire and it sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the holy ghost and began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Hallelujah. It says, And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men of every nation under heaven. And when this was noise that brought, the multitude that came together were confounded because every man heard them speak in their own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, so they were amazed and marveled. So we we're seeing a sign and a wonder was happening at the same time. So they were all amazed and marveled, speaking to one another, behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue when we were born? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and dwellers of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadonia, Pontus, and Asia, Philgar, Phamphylia, and Egypt, and part of Levi about Cyrene, strangers of Rome, Jews, and proselytes, Cretan, Cretes and Arabians, we do see what this is. verse 11 says, we do hear them speak in our own tongues the wonderful works 
of God. Hallelujah. So we see another sign was happening here. Apart from the sign which obviously they were speaking in tongues. But the other sign was they were speaking in diverse kinds of tongues. Because the Bible says so many people were gathered together. And they began to hear the, the, the wonderful works of God. Which means they were beginning to prophesy. They were prophesying. Not just prophesying. But the Bible said they were prophesying the wonderful works of God. In the various tongues of the various people who had gathered together. Hallelujah. It says, and they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying to one another, what means this? The others mocking says, these men are full of new wine. Hallelujah. So I want to highlight, you know, so many of us read this scripture, we don't actually see what is happening in the scripture. So number one, we see that we are filled with the Holy Spirit. Number two, the power of God came. There was, there was noise, but there was a noise. There was a, there was a sound that not just the house heard, the sound was actually the sound that the whole city heard because it wasn't just a quiet sound. It was noise that brought. They could hear the sound of it and they gathered. They all rushed into the room, uh, to the room where these people were praying and, um, and in God's presence. So we see that there was a sound. So it was a, there was a sign, just, not just a, phys- a, a spiritual sign, but a physical sign of a sound of a rushing mighty wind that the whole city heard. Hallelujah. So physically upon the believers, they could see there was cloven talks of fire resting upon each and every one of us, a sign to them as well. And they began to speak in tongues. And the Bible says they began to speak in diverse kinds of tongues. So another gift of the Spirit was also manifesting, not just speaking in tongues, but they were speaking in diverse kinds of tongues, you know, that people could understand um, around them. And we can see that they also prophesied in these diverse kinds of tongues. So we can see that various gifts of the Spirit are being manifested in one incident. But, and the Bible says in chapter 14, so obviously these guys were looking like they were drunk because people said the guys were drunk. And Peter stood and says, standing up among the eleven, little people and said to them, Ye men of Judea and all dwellers of Jerusalem, be known unto you, hearken unto my words, for these are not drunken as you suppose. Hallelujah. I believe that some of them were really, not, you know, like when you see a drunken person, um, I believe some of them were probably drunk in the spirit. Hallelujah. We've seen people getting filled with the Holy Spirit and get drunk in the Holy Spirit. Actually, look as if they're actually physically drunk, but they're drunk in the Holy Spirit. So I believe that many of these guys were also staggering and just, you know, just intoxicated with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in uh, Ephesians chapter 6, it says, be not, um, chapter 5, I think verse 18 it says, be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Glory be to God. So, um, wherein there's excess, but with only the Holy Spirit is what God wants you to be filled with. Glory be to God. So, we see that, you know, uh, the manifestation here was a manifestation of the power of God upon these people. And you see them moving and functioning in, this, in signs, wonders, and miracles. Now, this was the same Peter who, you know, some days before this incident, denied Jesus. And we know that while these guys were in the upper room, here in the upper room, they were actually hiding from the Jews because of the persecution. They, could, they were afraid that obviously they killed Jesus. Now they're going to come and look for them to kill them. So we could see a bunch of believers, a bunch of disciples who, you know, were living in fear of the, of the, of the authorities, all of a sudden are bold in the spirit, glory be to God. And they began to declare with confidence their faith in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. What gave them boldness? They received something. They received the power of God. Glory be to God. They received the anointing of the Holy Spirit. They were filled with the Holy Spirit, they were baptized in the Holy Spirit, and they spoke in tongues. And not just speaking in tongues, hallelujah, glory be to God, not just speaking in tongues, it was evidence in walking of miracles, signs, and wonders, hallelujah. So as a believer, let's not limit the baptism of the Holy Spirit only to speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues is just one aspect. It's just one manifestation. In fact, what I want to tell you something, what actually I was trying to bring out in this message is this. For me as a believer, when I got born again, when I got filled with the Holy Spirit, I spoke in other tongues, hallelujah, but all I did was speak in tongues. So I, I got my prayer language, obviously, and um, I got my prayer language, and um, but I wasn't seeing you know, the power of God. I wasn't seeing miracle signs and wonders happening. Hallelujah. And that happened to me for so many years because all I thought the baptism of the Holy Spirit was was actually speaking in tongues. So I spoke in tongues, I spoke in tongues, but that's all. That, that was the limits to which I functioned in the power of God. And if we don't realize this, if we don't realize this, many of us as believers are going to be caught in that same trap. If we are not seeing the power of God manifest through your life, healing people, glory be to God, 
Uh, hallelujah. God bless you, uh, Pauline. Yeah, that, those are my little prophets in the house. Um, you know, if we're not seeing the power of God manifest in our lives or through our lives, touching people, not just speaking in tongues, not just speaking in tongues. So we need to go beyond speaking in tongues. That's what I'm trying to get to. We need to enter in and begin to function in the power of God. Glory be to God. So we see Paul, um, we see Peter, when he received the baptism, this was a shy Peter, the fearful Peter, along with all disciples, they got bold in the spirit. Because the Bible says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and of a sound mind. He gave us a spirit of boldness, hallelujah. So they were bold in the spirit. And they began to, to declare and proclaim that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. He was the Lord. And we know that in that same um, chapter, towards the end, by virtue of his preaching, 3,000 people got saved in one day, hallelujah. In one day of ministering, 3,000 people got converted. Glory be to God. So we can see that the power of God the, the anointing of the Holy Spirit empowers you for ministry. Not just ministry in, in word only, but ministry in miracles, signs, and wonders. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So there are so many accounts of men of God, women of God, who have been filled with the Holy Spirit. When they got filled with the Holy Spirit, they began to see the power of God on a different dimension, on a level which they'd never known before. What I'm trying to say is this. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the one that will fill us. He's, the Bible calls him the baptizer in the Holy Spirit and with fire. Have you ever seen that scripture? Let's read Acts chapter 10 verse 38. Look at the scripture very clearly. Some people may not fully agree with what I'm saying, but I want you to understand that this is the word of God. I'm not saying anything that is not the word of God. Acts 10 8, 38 says, How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. Listen with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed with the devil for God was with him. Listen, it says they are not with the Holy Ghost and with power, which means there was a double baptism. Not just with the Holy Spirit, but there was a power involved in the baptism. So if you have been baptized with the Holy Spirit and you only speak in tongues and you're not seeing the power manifested, it probably means you are not, you've not gotten a full deep revelation of the baptism you've received or you need to ask God for a fresh baptism of power so you can begin to function in miracles, signs and wonders as a believer. It's your right as a child of God. Jesus Christ was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. When John saw Jesus, he said, this is the one who will baptize the, in the whole world with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So you can equate the baptism of fire or with, with the baptism of power. So it's the same baptism. But it's the baptism of the Holy Spirit and with fire. Or you can say the baptism of the Holy Spirit and power. Now, I want to say something. The Bible says when Jesus Christ was baptized in the Holy Spirit. The Bible says immediately he came out of the water. The Spirit of God led him into the wilderness. Hallelujah. But the Bible says when he came out of the wilderness, he came out in the power of God. Have you seen that scripture? Does this make sense to you? It says when he was baptized in the Holy Spirit, glory be to God. Hallelujah. God bless you, Alistair. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So the Bible says when Jesus Christ was baptized in the Holy Spirit, when he came out of the water with John, the, the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness. So he was filled with the Holy Spirit, right? But the Bible says the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness. After he was tempted 40 days and 40 nights, when he came out of the wilderness, the Bible says he came out in the power of God, which means he encountered something in the wilderness. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. God bless you, Alfred. That's exactly my same, what you've just said. Alfred says, I've been filled since age of 14, but I just started understanding and walking in the power within the last two years. And I didn't know what I had. I, I desire fresh baptism. God bless you, Alfred. That's exactly my same kind of testimony. I got filled with the Holy Spirit when I was 19 years old. But only two years ago, did I begin to understand the power of God. Then I began to see the power of God manifested in my life. When I realized, now from when I was 19 years old, you know, till two years ago, I was filled with the Holy Spirit. I was speaking in tongues. But I didn't walk in the power of God. I wasn't seeing the power of God. I wasn't seeing miracles happen. I wasn't seeing the power of God manifested when I minister, when I lay hands on the sick. I wasn't seeing people getting healed. So I wasn't functioning in the power of God. 
Hallelujah. And that's what I'm trying to get across to us. That most believers are stuck at the, at the point of just speaking in tongues. Because they've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And that's where they've stopped. But we need to realize there is more. There is more. It's not just speaking in tongues. We need to begin to function and walk in the power of God. Hallelujah. That's where I'm getting to. The Bible says in Acts chapter 10 verse 38, God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power. It's a very clear, very clear scripture. It says he was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. So as a believer, you need to desire to be anointed with the power of God. Not just, yes, you receive the battle of the Holy Spirit. It's like, you know, when Ezekiel, when Ezekiel talked about, you know, um, the water that came from the, from, the, from the temple. It says, the water came up to the ankle at first. Then it came up to the waist. Then it came up to the shoulder or to the, or to the, or to the chest or neck level. Then it became a water in which, you know, you could swim in. So what we're talking about is there's levels. There are levels to the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Because you can get up to the ankle level. Let's assume that the ankle level is actually you just speaking in tongues. So you're filled with the Holy Spirit, but all you are doing is just speaking in tongues. You need to graduate. You need to move from just speaking in tongues to begin to operate in the power of God. For the Bible says, God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost and with power. So Jesus Christ began to function in the power of God. He began to see miracle signs and wonders happen when he ministered. Now, now, how can you as a believer now, now you've, been received, you've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you speak in other tongues, how can you transition? How can you move from just speaking in tongues? You speak in tongues, that is great, but there is more. You need to move from just speaking in tongues to begin to walk in the power of God, to begin to see miracle signs and wonders happen. When you lay hands on the sick, the power of God is transferred. People are getting healed, delivered. They're beginning to see instant miracles happen. You need to realize this. It only comes by hunger. It doesn't come by you just, you know, wishy-washy, maybe if they get healed, maybe not, you know, maybe I get, no, no, no. There needs to be a, you need to have, you need to be determined in your spirit. You need to be desirous of the power of God. You need to desire, the Bible says, earnestly desire the gifts, the, 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 the gifts of the spirit. Earnestly desire, the Bible actually uses a strong word. The Bible actually uses the word covet. It says, earnestly covet the best gifts. Hallelujah. You can see that scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I think is the last verse. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I think the last verse, that's where you find that scripture where it says, um, Paul told the, um, the Corinthians, says, earnestly desire, look at it, um, 1 Corinthians 12 verse 31, it says, but covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet I show you a more excellent way. Amplify says, but earnestly desire and zealously cultivate the greatest and best gifts and graces, the higher gifts and the choicest graces. And yet I show you a, a still more excellent way, one that is far better by far and the highest of them all, which is love. So you earnestly, for you to begin to function in miracle signs and wonders, you need to earnestly desire to begin to see miracles happen. You need to earnestly desire, press into the Holy Spirit. This does not just, you know, you need to realize this, that God is not a wasteful person. God does not waste his gifts or his callings or his power. So before God will release to you or begin to see you function, before he begin to see you function in that level of the miraculous, of miracle signs and wonders, he needs to see that you are actually hungry enough for this. He needs to see that you're actually thirsty enough for it because some people actually stumble into it you know they just stumble into miracle signs and wonders they see it happen and it just happens so i agree some people just walk into it but for most people i know there is a laboring there's a there's a there's a desire there's a hunger there's a pressing in there's a pushing into it you know it doesn't just happen now i'll tell you why it doesn't just happen like that I asked, the, I asked the Lord one time, you know, there are so many people who say, you know, when they began to pray for the sick, they didn't see instant miracles happen. So many people I know, so many people I know, people like Kenneth Hagin, Kenneth Hagin said, you know, um, when he started praying for the sick, he, he prayed for more than 500 people. He didn't see anybody get healed. Um, um, 
So many people. Todd White, the same thing. Todd White prayed for almost a thousand people. He didn't see people get healed. Um, Charles Francis Hunter, the same thing. They prayed for thousands of people. They didn't see anybody get healed. Todd Bentley was the same thing. He prayed for thousands of people. He didn't see people get healed. Um, you know, I can go on and on. The list is so many people. You know, I was listening to Sid Roth the other day, and Sid Roth said the same thing. That when he started praying for people, he never saw anybody get healed. He prayed for hundreds of people. Nobody got healed. You know, you can go on and on and on. Right, um, Pete Cabrera, the same thing. He was saying when he started praying for people, he didn't see anybody get healed. When I started praying for people, I didn't see anybody get healed. But I prayed for people over and over and over again. I prayed for more than 500 people. Before I started seeing miracles, obviously I'll see maybe one or two, one or two in, the, in those 500, maybe one or two instant miracles. I'm talking about instant miracles. I'm not talking about you pray for someone that get healed over time, which is great. I love that. But I'm talking about instant manifestation of God's power. You pray now, boom, instantly they get healed. Instantly they get healed. You know, I'm talk that's what I'm talking about. Instant manifestation of miracles. That's a miracle. You know, a healing is the one that happens over time. That's fine. The Bible says, shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That's great. I, I, I love that because it's still the power of God. It's still the work of God. But I'm talking about walking in miracles. A miracle is an instantaneous manifestation of God's blessing or God's grace. Instant manifestation of God's miracles, of God's power, of God's grace. That's what, that's what, that's what Acts chapter 1 verse 8 is talking about. You shall receive power, which is the ability to walk miracles. So I'm talking about instant miracles. Now, when I began to desire this, and for um, pray for almost 500 people, no, no, I couldn't see anybody get healed. But all of a sudden, when I realized, obviously my theology was wrong, obviously. So there was something, there were things wrong with my theology. I thought that, you know, I needed the gift of the Spirit. I'm going to talk about that as well. You know, some of us are hung up with actually thinking, oh, Lord, I need a gift of miracles. Oh, Lord, I need a gift of, 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 of the word of knowledge. Or, Lord, I, gift, I need a gift of, um, you know, uh, faith or something like that. It's not about a gift. Now, that was my biggest problem. My biggest problem was I thought... I needed a gift of the Spirit. I thought I needed the gift of miracles. So about two years ago, I was praying and fasting. And I was saying to God, Lord, I want to see miracles happen. Lord, I want to see signs and wonders. Lord, I'm praying and seriously praying and engaging God. And actually asking the desire to see this. And I was praying and I said, Lord, I want the gift of miracles. Lord, I want the gift of healing. Lord, I want, Lord, I want the gift of, of, um, of walking miracles. Lord, I want, I want the gift of faith. And in the midst of my prayer and fasting, the Lord said to me very clearly one day. He said, listen. You don't need a gift of healing. You don't need a gift of, of working on miracles. You don't need a gift of faith. You don't need any of that. It's not about a gift. And I was like, what? I couldn't believe it. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm, not, I'm sure I'm not hearing properly. God, I know you don't need a gift of working on miracles. You don't need a gift of healing. You don't need a gift of faith or whatever it is you're asking for. And God was like, all you need is the gift of the Holy Spirit. And with the Holy Spirit, he will manifest whatever gift is needed or whatever or whatever whatever grace is needed at any point in time whatever you need depend on the holy spirit trust in him he will manifest that gift because he said all the gifts of the spirit are already inside the holy spirit and you have the holy spirit inside of you so all you need to do is trust holy spirit to manifest whatever gift you need at any time and he will manifest the gift when i got that i'm like Whoa, that day, I've heard that before, but that day it became a revelation in my spirit. It became rema to me. It became life to me. The Bible says the word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And the word became flesh, hallelujah. That word became life in my spirit, hallelujah. When I realized that I did not need the gift of the spirit. I did not need the gift of healing. I did, not, I did not need the gift of miracles. I didn't need the gift of faith. I didn't need, you know, all that. I was just wasting my time praying those prayers. And I realized that all I needed was the gift of the Holy Spirit. That because the Holy Spirit has all the gifts of the Spirit, if I trust Him, He will manifest the gift. Now, my problem was this. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. God bless you, Wayne. Hallelujah. So, my problem was this. I was actually, wait, I was actually, I didn't realize that my faith was actually more in myself. I actually had more faith in myself than in God because I felt that if I pray enough, if I fast enough, Maybe if I read enough of the Bible, or maybe if I, you know, do enough good deeds or whatever it was, you know, then God would begin to use me to work miracle signs and wonders. That was my thought. That was my, that was my mindset. This was my mindset before. So, I, because I actually, because what that I'm actually is saying is that you have faith, you have more faith in yourself than in God. That's what it's actually saying. But the problem is this, you are, you are limited because you cannot 100% fulfill every single thing. The only one person who was perfect enough to fulfill everything in this world. 
Because you will always have shortcomings. You will always make mistakes. You will always have something that you need to depend on God for. So you cannot depend on yourself. But when you begin to depend on the Holy Spirit, when I began to put my trust in the Holy Spirit, because Holy Spirit is perfect. His faith is perfect. Hallelujah. His faith does not go up and down like a yo-yo. No, his faith is perfect. I trust him. He's always on point. He doesn't need to be prayed up. He's (laughs) <laughs> Holy Ghost doesn't need to be prayed up. Holy Ghost doesn't need to read, read all the Bible to, to begin to walk in miracles. No, he's already full of the power of God. I just need to trust him to do the works and he will do the works. Hallelujah. I don't know if this is blessing you or not, but I'm just trying to tell you how God changed my mindset from thinking that way to actually begin to think the right way, to realize that I need to trust in the Holy Spirit and he will do the works. Glory be to God. And that was what happened. And when I began to do that, instantly I began to see miracles happen. Instantly, I began to see when I lay hands on people, I'm going to see, see the getting healed. Why? Because I don't trust in myself anymore. I trust in the Holy Spirit who lives on the inside of me because he is the one that does the works. You know, Jesus said, it is not I that does the work. It is the Father that dwells in me. He does the works. The same way, it's not us that does the, do the works. It's not us. not about us. It's the Holy Spirit. It is Christ in us. It's God in us that heals the sick, that does the works through us. Hallelujah. And that's all it is about it. Trust in the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says, you know, um, what's the best gift? And I think the best gift. The best gift is whatever gift is needed at that particular time or in that situation to be manifested. If the gift that you need to manifest at that time is healing, Christ or God, the Holy Spirit will manifest healing through you. If the gift that is needed is working in miracles, he will manifest working in miracles. If the gift that is needed at that time is prophecy, he will manifest prophecy through you. If a gift that is needed is word of knowledge or whatever is word of wisdom, he will manifest it through you. But the most important thing is this, trust in him to manifest it through you and you will see him walking through you. Hallelujah. That's all there is to it. So anyway, I think, you know, I've, I've talked about this. And the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for every believer. Everyone who is born again has a right to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Glory be to God. So like I said, let's pursue the gift and not the giver. Thank you very much for that, Pauline. Let's pursue the gift and not the giver. He said, um, Garrett, uh, Alfred, he said, when I'm asked if I have a gift or I'm a pastor, I tell them I'm a believer and I explain to them I'm a son and they can function the same way. Exactly. That's exactly the point. You know, Catherine Kuma says something. She says she never claims to have a gift of healing. And that's a very true point. When you realize that you don't have a gift of healing, it's the Holy Spirit that has the gift of healing, but you have access. Listen, you have access to that gift. You have access to the gift of healing, working the miracles, gift of faith, whatever it is, because you have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. And the Bible calls him your helper, which means the Bible says he helps you in your weakness. He helps you to, to fill that gap which you lack. That's why he's there, right there beside you. He's walking with you. The Bible says, and the Lord walked with them, confirming the words that they spoke with the signs following. Who was confirming the word? It was the Holy Ghost. It was Jesus. It was Christ in them. Confirming the words that they spoke with the signs following. It's the same way with you. Christ will confirm the words that you speak. The Holy Spirit will confirm the words that you speak with the signs that follow. Hallelujah. If you will only trust in him, trust in the Holy Spirit that is on the inside of you. And he will work the miracles through you. Hallelujah. So, that's all there is to it. Trust in the Holy Spirit. And as Paul said, the greatest of this is love. Love is the key. Love is the key that unlocks the power of God. Now, you can walk in miracle signs and water without love, but that would not benefit you. You know, you can give all the gifts you want to give to the poor without love and it will not benefit you. You can have all the faith you want to have in this world without love and it will not benefit you. But for it to benefit you as a believer, for it to have fruit and reward... For, the, for, for walking in the spirit, you need to walk in love. Love is the key. Love is the key. I want to, I'm going to tell you something. Something happened to me recently, fairly recently. And I want to share this with you as a testimony, but as a way of caution to you as well, if you're listening to me right now. When I began to see miracles happen, I, I was so excited. I was like, you know, see, you know, I began to see miracles happen. I was so excited. But it got to a point when I began to realize that I was, I, was, I was eager to see miracles, not just for the miracles sake, but so that I can have another testimony to give. I know what Lord said to me. Lord said to me, you know what? I don't want you to share the testimonies anymore. I don't want you to tell anyone what is happening. I just want you to bless God for what, what I'm doing through you. Do you know why? Because God wanted to make sure that I wasn't just interested in seeing miracles just to give testimony, just to show that, oh yes, I'm a, I'm a man of God. Oh yes, I can pray for the sick and can see miracles happen. Because your motives need to be really right. And God knows your heart. So God said to me, don't share the testimonies anymore. Pray for the sick, do what you're doing, 
See miracles happen, but don't tell anyone anymore. Just keep it between yourself and me and just thank me for it. And I had to stop. And when I, when I had to stop, and you know what happened? All of a sudden, later on, I began to pray for people and I wasn't seeing miracles happen anymore. And I was like, Lord, what's happening? And God was like, you need to check your motives. You need to check your heart. Make sure you are doing what you're doing, not because of another testimony, but because you love people. And I had to reevaluate myself again. I had to go back and check myself, check my heart, make sure that what I'm doing is just for the love of God, just because so God can love people and demonstrate his love to them. That is the motive. And do you know what? I'm so happy that God actually did not allow miracles to happen again after some time because it made me to realize, wow, Holy Spirit is so good. He lo you know, he loves you so much. He loves me so much. He loves us so much that he doesn't want us destroyed. He doesn't want us. So anything that would taint or that would harm you or destroy you, he would rather stop it or take it out of your life. And that's what happened to me. After a while, I wasn't seeing miracles happening again. I was like, Lord, I was I go outside prayer. I said, Lord, what's happening? And God had to tell me, say, listen, go back and check your motive. Your motive has to be love. Love is the foundation because if, if he allows you or if he allows me to begin to see miracles, signs and wonders without, without walking in love or without making love the key, or without making love the motive, you can get into error. You can easily get into error. You can easily get into you know, mistakes. So I'm just sharing that today as my personal experience, as my personal work with God. But that may not be your, your, your experience, but I just want to let that, maybe someone might be blessed with that. But what I'm trying to say is this, let love be your foundation. Because with love, when you have love and compassion in your heart, trust me, God can trust you with anything. God can trust you with, you know, miracles, with, with whatever. God can trust you with finances. God can trust you with anything. Hallelujah. Another thing I want to say just before I go is that, you know, speaking in tongues is great. Because when you begin to speak in tongues, that gives you access to all the other gifts. It edifies you, it builds up your spirit. So yes, so part of your work as a, as a believer is to speak in tongues edify yourself build up yourself in your most holy faith the bible says praying in the holy spirit but not just speaking in tongues for to experience miracle signs and wonders which is one part of it another part of that we are missing in the church in the body of christ today is that we are not walking in wisdom we are not walking in wisdom i want to say this again we're not walking in the spirit of wisdom because the bible says that joseph and um and Daniel, it says, talks about Daniel, Daniel upon whom God had placed the spirit of wisdom. The Bible talks about Joseph, says God had given him a spirit of, even Pharaoh had to say that Joseph had the spirit of wisdom upon him. Now what I'm trying to say is this. Now these are people who did, obviously did not speak in tongue, but they had access to the spirit of wisdom. And they were able to solve natural, national problems, natural problems. They solved, you know, Joseph, for example, was able to deliver, you know, save a whole nation, Egypt, from, from famine, saved Israel, saved many countries from famine because of the spirit of wisdom that was upon him. Daniel was able to advise the king, Nebuchadnezzar, advise, you know, was an advisor, a counselor to the king and to various kings, not just because of, but because of the spirit of wisdom that was upon him. Hallelujah. What am I trying to say? Many of us in the church today are taught to be spiritual, but we're not taught to be physically productive. So we speak in tongues, we pray in tongues, we fast, we pray, we, we do all spiritual activities, but we are not physically productive. We are not using that, you know, our access to the spirit realm, our access to God, we are not translating that into physical realities, into wisdom, into wisdom that can solve world problems, that can solve problems on your job. Do you realize that you can actually gain wisdom on your job? You can get wisdom on how to solve. I've done this so many times. At times when I've been stuck in a problem and I've gone in prayer and I've asked God, I said, Lord, give me wisdom. Lord, what do I do in this situation? And in the midst of my prayer, understanding comes. Hallelujah. The Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. In all you're getting, get understanding. So in the midst of my prayer, understanding comes on how to solve that problem. So what I'm trying to say is this. This is an aside note to the message, but I just feel like I should just add this on. We should begin to walk in the spirit of wisdom. You have access to the wisdom of God. If you read the book of Proverbs, Proverbs talks about how wisdom will bless you, will fill your house with all manner of riches and goodness and everything. Talks about wisdom should be our, our prized possession. Wisdom should be the most important thing we seek after. But wisdom is a person. And the Holy Spirit, the Bible calls him the spirit of wisdom. He is the spirit of wisdom and understanding. So we have access to the Holy Spirit. But we should begin to be productive, hallelujah. Not just being spiritual in the spirit. Be productive in the natural. Begin to invent things. Begin to, you know, do you know, realize that most of the inventors we had 
in the you know in in the industrial age and people like that Isaac Newton people like that right people who are actually very spiritual they were able to access the wisdom of God they were able to pray things into being they were able to seek God's face so in the midst of you praying and speaking in tongues don't just pray and speak in tongues with no you know with no physical relevance begin to Ask God for wisdom on your job. Begin to ask God for your wisdom on your, in your family. Begin to ask God for wisdom in that project you're working on. Begin to ask God for wisdom in various aspects of your life. Begin to seek wisdom. Seek the wisdom of God. Be productive in the natural. Be a blessing to your community, to your family, to your community, to your nation as a whole. Hallelujah. You can, do you know you can solve the problem of hunger in the world if only God will give you the wisdom to do it. Hallelujah. But you have access to that wisdom. You have the spirit of wisdom on inside of you. Anyway, I'm going to stop there because I think I just went on the sidetrack. But I think that will bless somebody. So just have a, think about that for a minute and I'm going to pray. I want to pray for you. I know some, most of you are already born again. Um, but if you are on this call or listening to me and you have not yet received Jesus into your heart, as your Lord and personal Savior. Maybe you've acknowledged him. You know that you know you know about a, per, a person called Jesus. You've heard about him in church. You've heard about him from people. But you've never asked him to come into your heart. To become your Lord and personal Savior. I want to give you an opportunity to do so. Because it's a free gift. You don't need to work for it. You don't need to go and say, oh, maybe let me let me try and sort out all my issues. For, let me stop drinking. Let me stop smoking. Or let me stop doing all the things I do before I come. No. That's not what I'm talking about. Come as you are. Jesus said, come as you are, all you that, that, that are you know, weary and heavy laden, and he will give you rest. Jesus wants to give you rest. You know, are you, are you weary? Are you downcast? Or maybe you've been hurt by religion. You've been hurt by the church in the past. You know, you know you, people have offended you in the church. You know, you've walked away. You've, you know, you just say, you know what? I don't, I don't want to have anything to do with that church thing anymore. I want to invite you to come again. Jesus is calling you once again to come back to him. So just say in your heart, just say, just, just say out loud, wherever you are, just say, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and personal Savior. Cleanse me from all my sins. I accept you today as my Lord and personal Savior. I thank you, Father, because I know that Jesus died for my sins. He was raised again for my justification. And I am alive because of him. I receive him as my Lord and Savior. And I thank you, Father, because I'm born again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. For making me born again. For making me clean and making me new. In Jesus mighty name. Now on the back of that prayer. I want you to pray to be filled with the Holy Spirit. For the Bible says this gift. The blessing of the Holy Spirit is for you. And it's for your children. And to your children's children. As men as Lord our God shall call. The gift of the Holy Spirit is for you as a believer. Now even if you have been filled with the Holy Spirit before. You can be filled again. Hallelujah. There are many infillings. There is one feeling and there are many infillings of the Holy Spirit. Just the same way you don't drink a glass of water one day and you never drink, a, you never drink water again. Tomorrow you're going to drink water again. The next day you're going to drink water again. Do you realize that? And the Bible also says the Holy Spirit is equated to water. For the Jesus said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. So even if you've been filled in the Holy Spirit in the past, you can be filled again. Hallelujah. Because the Bible also tells us in Acts chapter 4, I think it was Acts chapter 4, they were filled in Acts chapter 2, but in Acts chapter 4, they were filled again. Hallelujah. But the Bible says the Holy Spirit came upon them, the house shook where they were, and they received boldness to go out and minister the gospel. So I want to pray for you. If you've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, right now, it's a simple prayer. Just say, Heavenly Father, I ask you for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. For the Word of God says it is a gift that is for me. And for everybody that you're calling. Therefore, Heavenly Father, I believe I receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I thank you, Father. Right now, let that power begin to flow upon you. Let that power begin to come upon you in Jesus' mighty name. Some of you may begin to speak in other tongues. You know, in other words that you don't understand, you never heard before. Some of you may begin to prophesy. Some of you may just feel the power and anointing of God come upon you like a heat like a wave of God's glory, a wave of God's love coming upon you, or peace of God just come upon you. That's the baptism of the Holy Spirit coming upon you. And trust God to give you the, the, the evidence of speaking in tongues in Jesus' name. Now, if you've received that baptism, just begin to give God praise. Now, if you want to receive an infilling more, <laughs> you want to receive the power of God, I want to pray for the power of God right now to begin to flow upon every one of us who have been filled before. We want to be filled again right now in Jesus' name. Father, I ask for a fresh baptism 
upon every single person who is listening to this call. I pray for a fresh fire, a baptism of fire, a baptism of power, that they begin to walk in miracles, signs and wonders. That as they step out in faith, they begin to see miracles happen. They begin to see signs and wonders happen. They begin to see the sick being healed. They begin to see blind eyes opening. They begin to see the deaf being hearing. They begin to see the lame walking. As they pray for them in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for fresh baptism. I thank you for a fresh unction of power, of anointing, of fire. In the name of Jesus, receive it now by faith. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God. We believe we receive it. We receive it, a fresh baptism. Begin to drink of the Holy Ghost. Begin to drink of the river of the Spirit. Begin to drink in Jesus' name. Begin to drink by faith. Father, I drink of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I drink of the river of your Spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I drink of that river. I drink of that waters of the Spirit of God by faith in Jesus' name. A fresh baptism, a fresh unction, a fresh anointing, fresh fire, fresh grace in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. Um, I want you to share this message with your friends if you've been blessed by it because um, I know somebody out there needs to hear this message. So begin to share this message and uh, God bless you. I will catch up with you again next week in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Take care, guys.